Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be going over good pasture syndrome. Now, again, whenever you hear syndrome, we're not talking about a disease, we're talking about a cluster, right? A group of signs and symptoms that lead to a particular type or maybe different types of diseases. Now, before we get started, as always, I'm going to ask you to please support me and support this channel by liking this video please go ahead take the time now press the like button now so you don't forget and you're going to love the video just press the like button now so you don't forget subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and don't forget guys i'm now offering next generation nclex reviews one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions consultation sessions and you can reserve your spot right now by going to my website nexusnursinginstitute.com while you're there be sure to check out the audio lessons that i have available all right guys so let's get started Started, good pasture syndrome. Now take a look at what it says about the pathophysiology. So it says good pasture syndrome is an autoimmune disorder in which autoantibodies attack the glomerular basement membrane of the neutrophils. Let's stop and dissect that first question. This is how you're supposed to be studying. When you're reading, you're not reading to read, you are reading to understand. So what's happening is we're having, we're seeing a group of signs and symptoms that's associated with autoimmune disorders. And we talked about autoimmune disorders, you know, such as um, Guillain-Barre and lupus and uh, rheuma uh, rheumatic fever, et cetera, right? So we're seeing a group of um, symptoms associated with autoimmune disorders. And what's happening? The person's own body, their own um, antibodies are attacking the glomerular basement of the membrane and neutrophils. What does that tell us? That patient's own body is attacking their kidneys. Okay, and we know it's the kidneys because it said glomerular basement. The two organs with the most damage are the lungs and the kidneys. So not only are the kidneys involved, the lungs are involved to a large extent. Lung damage is manifested as pulmonary hemorrhage. Are we ever supposed to be seeing bleeding in the lungs? Absolutely not. Kidney damage shows glomerulonephritis and it rapidly leads to kidney failure. Now that's a problem because we know the kidneys are responsible for filtering out all of the, the, the toxins and the undesired particles out of the blood and it comes out through the urine, right? So if the kidneys aren't working, all of those toxins are staying in the bloodstream. And we know the blood goes everywhere. The blood goes to the heart, it goes to the brain, it goes to all of our important organs. Good pasture syndrome is most common in adolescent males or young men, young men. Now, this is different because when we were talking about Sjogren syndrome, who was at highest risk? Women. Women between 35 to 45. But now we're talking about good pasture syndrome, and it's the opposite. Who's most at risk? Males. And not only males, young males. Let's take a look at the patient-centered collaborative collaborative care. So manifestations, what will this patient look like? The patient will have shortness of breath. Remember the lungs are attacked. Homoptosis, blood in the sputum, which we should never see. Decreased urine output because your urine, the kidney's not working the way it's supposed to. Weight gain because the kidney's not working um, working the way it's supposed to. Instead of the patient getting rid of the all of the fluid with the toxins in that fluid, which is the urine, they're holding on to it. So we're going to see weight gain. Generalized edema for the same reason. Hypertension for the same reason. And tachycardia for the same reason. I want you to think about it. Why tachycardia, Professor D? Well. Patients holding on to all of this fluid, all of these toxins, you better bet your bottom dollar that, it, that if your heart's working correctly, it's going to try to help out. It's going to try to compensate. And so you're going to see the heart rate go up. You know how the heart rate's supposed to be 60 to 100? You're going to see the beats per minute in excess of 100 because it's trying to compensate. All right? Chest x-ray, look at what it says about chest x-ray. It says that chest x-ray shows areas of consolidation. When you see areas of, you see consolidation on the x-ray, I want you to think of pneumonia. Usually that's what's happening, okay? The most common cause of death is uremia as a result of kidney failure. What is uremia? Don't just skip over that, guys. Make sure you understand the terminology. Uremia, you're right, urine. Emia in the blood, urine in the blood, those toxins, those undesired, unwanted particles that should have 
been excreted in the urine because the kidney's not working and it's backing up and backing up, backing up. Guess what? It's staying in the bloodstream. Uremia, yep, that'll kill you. That'll do it. So let's keep going. It says that interventions focus on reducing damage from excess um, immunity and performing some types of renal replacement therapy. And in parentheses, I put dialysis. I wish the book would have just would have said dialysis, but I'm letting you know this is what they're talking about. So let's talk about this one sentence. Interventions focus on reducing damage from excess immunity. What do you think they meant by saying excess immunity? Because is it immunity a good thing? Yes, it's a good thing. But when you have excess immunity, it's doing the most. This person's body is doing the most. Remember what's happening. You, it's an autoimmune disorder where their um, auto antibodies are attacking itself. So their own immune system is doing the most. That's why they said excess immunity. That's the problem. So our interventions are going to focus on um, the damage that's caused from that excess immunity from the own, that person's own antibodies attacking the kidneys and the lungs, right? And intervention is going to be focused on renal replacement. We got to fix this problem that the kidney's not working. And now we have all these poisons and toxins in the person's bloodstream. What? Dialysis. Let's keep going. What type of medications do you expect to be ordered for this type of patient? High dose corticosteroids. Remember, corticosteroids are good for decreasing inflammation. It's uh, good to suppress, you know, autoimmune response. Absolutely. But there's something I want you to keep in mind. Whenever a patient is on high dose steroids, automatically we're going to be concerned about these three things. And I want you to remember that. High dose steroids, it's needed. The patient needs it. But at the same time, we're going to be concerned about hyperglycemia because we know that steroids are very sugary. We're going to be concerned about infection because um, it decreases uh, increases patients' risk for infection. We're going to be monitoring them much more closely for the signs and symptoms of infection. We're going to be concerned about fractures because we know when it comes to steroids, it makes the bones porous. The patient's more at high risk for fractures. And guys, I'm actually going to add a fourth one to this because steroids are very hard on the stomach and we're going to be concerned about the patient getting gastric ulcers. So we make sure when you're giving the steroids, you're making sure that you're not giving it on an empty stomach. Okay. Keep that in mind. Anyway, what else um, do you expect that may possibly be ordered for the patient? Plasmapheresis, that's filtration of the plasma to remove some proteins, right, from the blood. What else? Renal replacement therapy, dialysis, hemodialysis, or, you know, nothing else works, kidney transplant. Because the problem here, the two biggest problems is the kidney and the effect on the lungs. And guys, that is your good pastor syndrome in a nutshell. That is your meat and potatoes of what you guys need to know, all right? So please, as always in the comment section, let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover next or maybe even more extensively. Don't forget, almost daily, you can find me covering a variety of nursing topics across my other social media platforms such as TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video and you guys will catch me on the next video.